In a world filled with cinematic trash, it's easy to call out everything wrong with the movie. But what if we forced that lazy film criticism to stop hating on movies? What if they were forced to love them? We grabbed two of the most negative neckbearded film critics on the internet and force them to watch some of Hollywood's greatest dumpster fires. They'll go head to head, competing to see who can most convincingly defend these cinematic piles of <laughs> Each man must fight to overcome his hatred, learn to love each wretched film, and confidently <laughs> declare to the world that it is the best movie ever. Best movie ever is going to be part of my new movie channel, Movie World, where we only talk movies. So hit that subscribe button, that bell for all alerts, and then smash that like button and leave a comment down below with the movie you want to torture us with next. Welcome back to Best Movie Ever. So happy to be here with my competitor, Vito. Andy, I want to say you're my friend, but now you're my rival. Competing Vito, for points in this insane competition we've devised. I wouldn't wish any of my enemies to watch this movie. <laughs> But that's not how this movie yes. works. This is best movie ever. We have to declare that this film is one of the best movies ever. And this week we're watching Battlefield Earth. Oh, my goodness. All right. Well, we have to be positive. I got it out of my system. Yes. We yes. Got, now we must true. move forward being positive. We must both defend this film as one of the best films ever. And we will each have five points that we have to uh, offer. Uh, and uh, if we... Give one, then the other person has that on their list. They have to find another one. That's how this show works. We'll be forced to find five positive points for Battlefield Earth. And Vito... And whoever has the best five is going to win. Correct. And, and that's going to be me. We decided to do Rock, Paper, Scissors last week. This week, however, we had a poll. Uh, and we're going to have a poll in the pinned comment after the end of the show. Make sure you vote. Uh, but the poll deemed that I won last week. Yes! Oh, come on. Yes! No. Let me see this So, was, uh, because I won, here? it was a it was you won by five votes. It was <laughs> it's close to enough. Twenty-one. That's, that's Are more you than a couple. Uh, but because I won, here's what we decided, Vito. As the loser this week, you get to decide. Yes. Would you like to go first this week? Yes, I'm going to go first. <laughs> I think. I think that's. I think that's the right way to play this. I think it is too. All right. So, guys, this is how this works. We have to declare Battlefield Earth as the best movie ever. We each have to give five points of positivity. Vito will be starting first. You guys will be voting who gave the best argument to declare Battlefield Earth as one of the best movies ever. All right, Vito, we're going to you. That means you get to go first with your number one. Go ahead when you're ready. Okay. So, Battlefield Earth, terrible movie theoretically but i love it because it is a very interesting look at the past through the eyes of a, a post-apocalyptic society it's very interesting to see these people who have been driven to the brink of extinction the humans or as the movie refers to them man animals rediscovering uh this world in which we live and, and the legends that have come from you know over the years built up so, for example, in the beginning of the movie, they're worried about the monsters outside of town. You find out that the monsters are these ridiculous statues of dinosaurs and penguins from an abandoned mini golf course. And that's interesting. I find that interesting. It's funny. He like, you know, he stumbles into the thing and he gets all freaked out and starts poking it with his stick. It's a little mini golf. It's very interesting to me. But then it gets even better when they get into the city. He finds these two other guys who are telling him the mythos of this world and he's like when the gods left they were so mad that anybody who didn't you know who looked at them as they left they froze them the gods weren't allowed to fall in love with mortal women but this one did and was left behind frozen as punishment this is the hilarious mythos they've built up around this whole thing i mean the best part is probably when one of them goes you know previously in this world they drove chariots to golden arches, golden arches, golden arches, and their food would just appear in front of them. It was a glorious time. It's, it's, it's an interesting concept. Like, what would happen if the world ended? You would probably have people talking about McDonald's like it was some sort of magic wonderland where you just showed up and food was there. You know, now you got to hunt for rabbits and rats. Back then, in the time of the gods, before they got so upset with us and froze our people, 
I love that concept, and and I think that's one of the best parts of the movie. Absolutely. All right. Well, I love that you kept using the word interesting a lot. I don't know if that sounded very positive, Vito, but I'll sure there were some interesting. I like things that are interesting. <laughs> what? That's positive. I- interesting. Sure, there were interesting parts of seeing. It was a little Planet of the Apes. Okay, I guess right. Of oh yeah, look, it was it was our planet. Yeah. I guess kind of a way. All right, interesting. Which is great. I will. I will. All right. There we go. We have our first. Uh, <laughs> First thing out the gate. Uh, bravo, Vito. All right. My number one. I'm going to I'm surprised you didn't go there already. I'm going to go right out the gate. Two words for you guys. John Travolta. Yeah, oh I knew. My. All right. This- I thought I should lead with that one, but for some reason. <laughs> ah. Travolta, of course. Travolta is on fire in this movie. Now, come on. This <laughs> man is totally committed totally committed you believe his hatred of the man animals that first scene where he's like why would yeah i'll be i'll be lost in my skull bone if i say a man animal shot him sir i swear it shot the wrangler point file today still has my name on it and you are out of your skull bone if you think that i'm going to write on the report shot by man animal as the cause of death unless i see it he just goes Full into this Terrell character that it just I, I can't it's he gives it all and I totally bought it I, I, I every time he's on screen arguing with Forrest <laughs> Whitaker whoever it is every moment John Travolta is on screen is a joy to watch because he commits and when an actor commits fully into sort of a crazy world that they're in uh, when they do that they manage to end up you just sort of are like oh wow is he he goes for it and so I, I love that about him I love that he, he keeps, he's giving 200% throughout the whole movie and just that line while you were still learning how to spell your name, I was being trained to conquer galaxies. Uh, he just has this, yes. this fantastic energy to him, uh, this hatred. You feel for him a little bit in the beginning. Uh, he manages to make this ridiculous seeming villain, uh, this this conehead type of alien, a fun character that I I, I loved to hate, hate to love. Either way, I, I have to give yeah. John Travolta the most props for selling this movie to me. He's evil, but it's a fun evil. Mm-hmm. You, you almost start to enjoy it. The movie goes a little long, but I don't know. I could see more Terrell. Maybe a Terrell spin Terrell, off we, uh, we ter- could have enjoyed. An HBO there. Max Terrell series, maybe? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> All right, Vito. Well, I guess I'm gonna I'm gonna follow up on you uh, talking about uh, committing to the bit, bit a bit of overacting, but in a way you you can't help but love it. Our main character, whose name I've already forgotten. What was the main <laughs> character's name? I'm not helping you. I wrote down his. Hold on. I wrote down his actor's name, Barry Pepper. <laughs> Barry. Yeah, Pepper, you know that the, character, the, Barry one of the Pepper. Great actors of all time. No, no, no. Barry Pepper's the actor. Look. The point is, I was so captivated by Mr. Pepper's performance, I didn't have time to catch his name. <laughs> this guy goes nuts! I can only imagine that the casting for this movie, they must have just locked these guys in a cage and said, act like you're a wild animal uh, you're trying to, uh, you're fighting for your life. This guy is just uh, pure insanity. He's screaming. He's fighting. There's one part where they're hosing him down. He's trying to rip the hose away from him. Just, just desperate to survive the, this constant struggle, and it's it's so over the top. It's so animalistic. Just the way that he's animated on screen, just running and screaming and grabbing, and I, I don't know. You have to love a guy who goes that far for the role, which may be his last major role ever because it's Battlefield Earth. I don't think I don't think that got him a lot of accolades in Hollywood. But if you look at the soul of the performance, the heart of an actor who commits to the character, I mean, you have to love you have to love the passion that man put into that role. Absolutely. Yeah, I'll give his passion to Johnny is his name in the film. Yes, Johnny, Johnny Good Boy. <laughs> exactly. There, I know that. Uh, Johnny yes. Good Boy does go on, just like Travolta. They're both going toe to toe. So I, you're right. You can't have John. You can't have Travolta's Terrell working without Johnny fighting back. And they they have some great scenes together. Damn right, rat brain. Keep wanting up. Who's smarter? Uh, they, yeah. They, those two actors definitely did Cunning. give it. They definitely gave it, I guess the word is they're all. Uh, <laughs> who was who directed this? Where Did he just tell him like, I need more. I need more. And they're like, okay, I'll go a little bit more. He's like, you're going to have to go more, more here. Give more. Like, <laughs> it was a lot. It's more cowbell to more. infinity. <laughs> all right. Well, I need more cowbell. More cowbell. For my number two. I'm going to go with knowledge is key. This movie mm. teaches you 
the importance of of knowledge, right? I mean, it's a lesson for all future dictators. If you teach your slaves how to read, they will overcome and take you down, right? I mean, and and for the man animals, for the humans, I don't know always, if that's a good lesson always, for anyone, but sure. <laughs> I'm just saying it's teaching everybody a lesson here right. of the importance yeah. of knowledge. The more you know is so important because even that poor Klinko uh, language slave. I am not a lowly Klinko language slave. As you are listening to me, I most likely do not exist. Ends up teaching him the language that, but you feel bad for them. But then they are the ones who end up giving the man animals the weight, the the keys to the kingdom. They literally give them in a library, and by using humans using a library, we realize that humans are the smartest aliens in the whole universe. All we need is mm. a book, Vito. And what an inspiring lesson for the children, for the viewers, to know the importance of knowledge. See, I learned something called molecular biology. This, this is the symbol for water. These cyclos are so well-versed, you'd think, and, you know, strong, but they don't realize that the education is really the key to it all. It's a knowledge machine. This may be our only way out of here. So what an amazing lesson uh, that the importance of knowledge and education is the key to, to the world. I mean, they even show him teaching the other man animals like geometry. You know, he's like showing them what a triangle is. He's yeah. like, see if all three sides are equal, the, the angles are equal. And you're like, all right, yeah, he's, he loves sure. learning. He's he smart. Goes to the library. The yeah. no, the, the, I did, I did the have best. that as one of my, uh, I did have that in Extras. my notes that it is great that ultimately they win through learning. I love the part where they teach the caveman how to fly the plane. <laughs> it's another amazing. Hey, 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 what are you doing here? <laughs> oh, You're stealing one of mine. Oh, sorry. All right. No, fine. no, no, I'll, no. I'll, no. I'll, I'll, go ahead. You can take that one. Go ahead. All right. I'm going to go right <laughs> off there. Let's talk about the ending of this movie, the, the, the climax of this movie, which I would call cavemen with jet planes. <laughs> you got to love it. They find in a, a military. They go to Fort Hood. I don't know how they got there. I don't know why the Cyclos never went there and took all the stuff before they got there. But they're in there. They're finding nuclear bombs. They're finding tanks, rocket launchers. And, of course, there is a flight simulator and a bunch of ready-to-go, fueled-up fighter jets. Now, they only got a week. I don't know how you teach a squad of cavemen how to fly a bunch of fighter planes in a week, but they get it done. What happens? The Cyclos have their stupid sci-fi looking uh what do you call it flying machines all of a sudden a bunch of crazy man animals flying fighter jets in one of the greatest 90s ridiculous cg monstrosities you will ever witness planes going crazy crashing into each other trying to take out the dome uh, how can you not love a movie that ends with a bunch of dirty savages <laughs> jumping into an f-14 and firing missiles uh, fantastic i i love it Makes me think of unfrozen caveman. I'm, I'm just, just a caveman. Your world frightens and confuses me. <laughs> Phil Hartman's there. Uh, yeah, no, I, 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 it was a great moment. Uh, it is a crazy moment where they go to the library. I love they're like, they're in a hurry. We don't have time for this. You don't have time. You can't hide this from home office forever. But I will leave you here at this library to learn the Declaration of Independence <laughs> and everything. It's a wonderful scene. Just showing. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> Learning the Declaration of Independence. I'm like, they wow, make, they're really hitting you over the head. They make such the... a point of how much they don't have time for this. But here. Look at anything you want, because there's nothing that will help you. Take a week in this library to learn. Uh, it, it just again it reinforces both of our points there. So, uh, all right, I will I will accept your point uh, as a as a follow. -up. I, I teed up your point though. I will I, I have to say. All right, now going. Yeah, we kind of mixed our points. Up. Going, so now it goes back to you. Now my number three. Uh, yes. Look, this is a relatable story. Okay, it's a relatable story because T Travolta's Terrell is just your typical mm. work manager. Now, right, if, if he, just, he just wants to move up the oh. ladder. Your long overdue transfer. <laughs> you must be looking forward to getting off this disgusting excuse of a planet. I just want to do whatever serves the corporation best, sir. I mean, if you really think of this movie, it's sort of like space office space, right? I mean, if he, they keep toying with him and... I must say, you've done a first-rate job here as interim security chief. <laughs> I do what I can, which is why we've decided to keep you on for another tour of service. 
taking away his <laughs> yeah. like his, his the the the, 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 the position that he keeps hoping they're gonna get. They keep dangling it over him. Are you not aware that I graduated top of my class? Quite an accomplishment. You sort of feel for this guy. You realize, oh man, if they had just you know given them raises, taken care of their employees, and you know let them sleep with whoever he wanted to sleep with, and just not gotten greedy, they would you know then not force them to pee in bottles like Amazon, and all this would have been avoided. Manimals would have still been enslaved, and everyone would have been happy being cyclos. But no, this is a relatable work story where who doesn't want to just raise up the ladder, and then the boss is always just keeps kicking you while you're down. And it's a joke. <laughs> I don't know if I could have kept my sanity to be here another five cycles. We've decided to keep you here for another 50 cycles. No, you're not going to get that, <laughs> that promotion. No, get out of here, Terrell. Ha, 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 ha. You slept with my cousin. To be clear, you're, you're saying dead. you relate to the villain of the movie. Yeah, his well. Flight yeah, to yeah. climb the corporate ladder. Yeah, I, I, yeah, look. One day, you're going to die. And when you end up in hell, at least it'll be a step up from this place. They're all trying to climb up the ladder of the home office, which to me made, felt very relatable of a corporate structure of anybody who's just working that nine to five job. They go to the bar at the end of the day. It's just say they're working, they're drinking, they got their annoying employees. You know, they're just trying to trying to live a life, Vito. And so, yeah, Terrell's just, yeah. Like, a, just like an everyday guy working the nine to five. And I related that. It's space office space. Well, they're kind of like a Ferengi civilization where their only religion is capitalism. Uh, sure. and the, the rules of their society change. At one point, they're like, listen, this is a profit-threatening situation, which gives us special powers under the law because profits are threatened. Uh, yeah, and it's all... But, you know, they have weird intrigue of killing each other off and spying what, on each other. Who would have thought you could do this relatable office story in space is all I'm saying. So that's that's my that's my positive for you, uh, Vito. All right, so as you go now to your number, your number four. All right, here we go. Number four, I believe. Yes. Okay. Now, this one's maybe short and sweet, but it's my favorite scene in the movie. I laughed for probably two straight minutes. The cow. Do you know what I'm talking about? For some reason, he takes him out there and he shoots the leg off a cow. I la I could not I didn't laugh as stop as you did, laughing. Think, but... And then John Travolta. Did you not laugh at that scene where he just goes, boom. Leg falls off, immediate cut back to them. And then Terrell is just shooting his gun randomly. He does a shot like behind the back. I'm like, I love, I wish the whole movie was just this guy goofing around, shooting whatever. Like it just shows the unstable nature of the cyclos. Like they're legitimately insane. Where he goes, yeah, I'm gonna shoot this cow right now. I, look. I, maybe this doesn't make sense if people are watching this video, but if you just sat through an hour of, uh, you, know, of a, you know, it's a very intriguing plot, to be clear, when being very positive about the movie. But, you know, an hour in, you need a little lighthearted moment. Shooting that cow's leg off, I could not stop laughing. Maybe, maybe that's too minute a point, but I have to say, best scene in the movie, I loved it. I, I, it wasn't as memorable for me, but now that you say it, it makes me laugh. And I'm definitely. How was it not memorable? <laughs> I talked to somebody else on the phone. I said, I just watched Battlefield <laughs> Earth. The first thing he said was, How about that scene where he shoots the cow's leg off? I'm like, I know! We literally. He brought it up unprovoked. <laughs> I uh, swear all right. to you. Oh, all righty then. I guess I'll I'm have, not alone in this. I will have to accept your answer as as fair. I laughed uh, so hard I had to pause the movie. <laughs> I, well, we just I played it again multiple times throughout this. So hopefully, tell us if you laughed on the comments <laughs> below as you rewatch that that moment. All right. Well, I'm going to take one of yours. I mean, that's going to pivot into a similar one I have, sure. which is just I'm going to give this movie props for its slapstick comedy. Uh, and I'm going to take it in a new mm. direction. To me, I, I said it was space office space, but no, this one really is like if, if amidst all the seriousness, there are these moments of slapstick where it's like if you really take Tron Travolta and Forrest Whitaker, I'm telling you, it's like Michael Scott and Dwight from The Office. Like there are these <laughs> moments where if you watch them together and you watch it with the lens of The Office, uh, that scene where he's like the, when, when Travolta hits the oh, God, fat ass and let's go round them up. Ceiling. I thought I told you to get some man animals in here and fix it. I can just totally see Michael Scott yelling <laughs> at Dwight about doing that. Uh, yes, you know, fall, wa tall walking around trying to clean up the uh, the office. If can, I, I, can I say something? Travolta sold him hitting his head on that thing so well. Ah! Crap, lousy ceiling. 
that I actually thought that it was an accident that they then wrote into the <laughs> totally script. I agree. I'm like, did he just accidentally <laughs> hit his so head? They're character. like, we got to use that. We got to use that take. It goes back he to my number one. It. He's like, ah, dad gets any, any, and he remembered to say man animals too. I thought I told you to get some man animals in here and fix it. He was so in character that he, he ad libs. I think the... he really hit his head on that thing. <laughs> totally he, it might. looks like he was not prepared for it. No. <laughs> some bad And then set. they add to the movie. They're like, all right, somebody, they actually have them, you know, <laughs> taking out the seal. I really hope that's what happened. I hope so that's too. That's what I thought. Right, let's make that's it. Let's make cannon. that be what it is now because it makes but officially. It only adds. Like, see, it's like an office blooper that he sold in in Michael Scott, Forrest Whitaker, also hilarious. And if you watch him as sort of the dumb Dwight, I'm telling you, watching these two go. I love the other line again. But I was not groomed since birth to have some cushy job. That even a moron like you could perform. <laughs> it just feels like Michael. I watch The Office a lot now, and it really feels like there were parts of it when I, when I, when that clicked into my brain as I was watching it. I enjoyed their scenes together even more. All of them trying to get leverage on each other. Never underestimate what a little leverage can do. Which is what Dwight is always doing around right. the office. This is called leveraging an offer uh, which sneaky. who's going to get the title of regional uh, home office manager uh, I, I t there's a whole sub layer of this movie watching it as the office that i think adds a whole nother funny rink I, I challenge you at home watch it in that uh, with that and you'll enjoy it even more all right Vito, now it's your final point here we go right before we got like really good you know cg special effects there was a transitionary period where the, the special effects are hilarious in a in a fun way. I love these these virtual uh, reality. At one point, he's trying to learn how to pilot <laughs> one of the cyclo things, and you're like, dude, this looks like that stupid thing I used to get into at the like the county fair, where they're like, you can play virtual reality for five minutes for like you know ten bucks. You were like, oh, and he's trying to drive that thing around. The laser blasts all look hilarious. These crazy. Stupid thud lasers that explode on the wall. I, I loved Planet Cyclo, I think, was the, the real uh, best use of that technology. It's this insane purple planet. Everything's on fire. It just looks awesome to me. And even the, with the, the big final sequence with the dome falling apart, I enjoy seeing the evolution of special effects. And I think this is a great little snapshot in time. And even the ending of the movie is is a CG set. We have uh, John Travolta locked up in Fort Knox, and we pull back on this this <laughs> what looks like they modeled it in you know through blenders. Um, I don't know. Just just they committed to using that technology, even when it was maybe beyond their. It had limitations, but they found ways to make it work that has a charm to it. That that I enjoy seeing it, and I enjoy seeing so, them working so hard to try and make it work. Is it perfect? No, but you appreciate the craftsmanship of what they were going for. I mean, I could challenge you to no death. There, it, it did not work at all, but that's the one, this is the one time <laughs> no, I'm, allowed, it did. I'm allowed to fight you. Uh, but for the sake of the theme of the show, I will, I, will, I will hold back and not fight you on that point because there's a funness of looking back in that ridiculous uh, technology. Uh, yes! But uh, I, I, you almost are... I'm impressed at how much you're selling it, almost like you actually did enjoy it. <laughs> I enjoy seeing, you know, how much work did it take to 3D model... This ridiculous that's city that he's piloting the thing Why did through. they show the rat learning how to play? It was so long and or, so silly. What about when that alien shows up and talks to him? That You loved that guy. Yeah. That yeah. was the like Klinko. a weird CG the puppet. Klinko yeah, alien, Clinko. Yeah. Oh, pardon yeah, me and for he's interrupting the, you. He's getting the information beamed into his eyes. I love it. It's like, it's like low budget, but with so much charm. You, you got to love it. Oh, I mean, I guess I, I know you don't. You definitely don't have to love it, but you I will. Do, I, I will accept should. that uh, you loved it. All right, I will give you that. I love. All right, going it. to my it. final point. Then I'm. Uh, what I'm going to go with. Look, like the Snyder cut. This uh -oh. is a artist and novelist vision come to life, uninhibited. This is L. Ron Hubbard's oh. sci-fi Scientology oh. life brought to life. Now look. 
there was a screenwriter who was tackled with this this movie, and you know what happened? John Travolta came in and said, "No, this is not L. Ron Hubbard enough. <laughs> this is not like the movie. I am a Scientologist. He is an important Scientologist. While this isn't a Scientology movie per se, there are some themes hidden throughout. I would argue mm. it might actually deter people from Scientology, seeing how much they fight back at the things they don't believe and see. However, that's moot. The book was L. Ron <laughs> Hubbard, and this is L. Ron Hubbard's vision and pure delight. We get to see the cyclos, those weird stilted Klingons, carefully walking up steps, clearly having trouble walking up steps. <laughs> In their platform <laughs> boots. Platform yeah. kiss boots. I mean, the, this weird conehead type of makeup. All these vision. I mean, the how stylish were the nose plugs? I mean, that is just something I that love the director the brought weird, in. The under the chin, the the wispy weird two yep. beards. And you love it. You're talking about the effects, but how about that moment in the beginning where the audio just stops and then it slows down and it turns green and they try to do this like low rent version of Predator, like. Yes. And brilliant. The laser effects when they're shooting, the the, the the slow motion. I mean, they even at one point are like, you know what, F it. We're going to do some Star Wars wipes. We're just going to do them. This is a... There's a lot of center wipes. Yeah, a yes. lot of center wipes. This is just a creator, artist vision, untouched. John Travolta was able to really bring in full L. Ron Hubbard in all his glory. And for those that follow, I must say, <laughs> hail, hail, almighty Xenu and everyone else because whoa, whoa, bravo, whoa, whoa. You can't bravo. Bravo. Praise L. Ron Hubbard and then praise Xenu. That goes against. Are you supposed to hate Xenu? Well, no, and Scientology. You know anything oh, about oh, our I, faith of Scientology? I don't. Xenu's the bad guy. Oh, that's right. I forgot. I forgot about that South Park episode. Uh, don't hail a Xenu. Boo Xenu. Yeah, boo Xenu. We hate Xenu. <laughs> Sorry. He's the one who strapped a bunch of new bombs like the to volcanoes yeah, and filled he's... the planet with Thetans. What <laughs> a jerk. Right. That's right. We're being positive. Your best religion ever. Uh, yes, and he's like the Tarot. <laughs> so they're getting rid of the Tarot is Xenu. That's what makes more sense. Even better. This is this is a visionary's dream. That's where I got to end this. Well, it is the only L. Ron Hubbard movie. I don't think we're ever going to get another one. But uh, it is great to see uh, this man's insane vision brought to the screen. And did you know that L. Ron Hubbard also composed a soundtrack to the book called Space Jazz? <laughs> Space? The official soundtrack wow. of the book Battlefield Earth. Is any of so. it in the movie? I don't know. I, you would hope so. That would have been a I massive positive. So. so you lose points for not bringing it up. So there you go. Doesn't count. Uh, Whoa, I lose <laughs> points. <laughs> any, no, any, you at home, you're not allowed to invent rules. Come on. Are there any other points you'd like to bring up? I had one I, that didn't make my cut. I'll give you one. Don't. Vito, how Chris great was stop. the female empowerment in this movie? I mean, there's one female character who declares, I do not need your permission. I don't need your permission. <laughs> And then proceeds to follow the man the whole movie. It's brilliant. I mean, then the, and then the alien girl who th sticks her tongue out all over Terrell. I mean, a female getting leverage yeah. happens to be Travolta's <laughs> wife, Kelly Preston. I mean, bravo to what they did oh, okay. for all the ladies. Uh, any other points you'd like to add? Uh, I should have mentioned that I there was some some good cinematography. Not there, there's too many Dutch angles. I was gonna say, are too you much sure? Tilting the, the Dutch frame. Angles? No, no, no. Yeah, that was a little much. But there are some some scenes I thought looked good. Like when he's first captured, he falls through the, the glass window. I thought it looked great. Uh, the way they shot it to make the cyclones wait, wait, look wait. bigger than the Hold humans. On. You like the scene where he walks through 10 glass windows? Panes of glass. <laughs> it was shot well. It looked I'm... interesting. It is a little weird. You're like, buddy, it's glass. <laughs> but we establish that every, he doesn't really every... know what glass wait is. Wait a second. We Everything in that the... shot. Everything in the world is destroyed except for 10 panes of glass. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. But they set it up because there's the scene where he doesn't know what glass is. So, of course, he'd keep stumbling through it. Look, all the humans locked up in the cages, you know, rattling the bars. Uh, I thought there was some good looking stuff in this movie. And then, you know, also some CG nightmares. But those have <laughs> some, a, their own certain charm. It's a mix. I do really love that moment where he goes. As he's oh god, the glop! He hands oh out the god. glop and his eat the glop. It's like I think I'd they be like, take the glop from him. I almost <laughs> threw up. That was disgusting. I think I'd be like, "Excuse me, sir, I'll get my own glop." Thank you yeah. very much. 
I, I like to get my own. You know, there's like a certain way I like, oh, you take your own glob. I, I'm going to get my own. But aside from Maybe that minor bowl. point, I think we yeah. did a great job declaring Battlefield Earth as the best, best movie, movie ever. ever. What do you guys think in the comments down below? Who did the best job selling you on? Is this the best one of the best movies ever? There will be a straw poll pinned down below in the comments section. So after you've watched it all, go vote. Don't cheat and vote until then just because of your favorites. Uh, now that you've watched all the way through, uh, vote there and tell us who won. The winner will get a uh, uh, disadvantage next week, I guess. So <laughs> either yeah. way we win. The <laughs> well, the winner gets a point on the scoreboard. That's yeah, there what we go. Want. I'm up by You're one. Up one. We'll see what yeah, happens this week, one. Vito. Final words, and, Vito. Uh, hashtag, hashtag Team Vito. You know, the, the, you know, you can vote for who had the best one, but also who you like the most, which oh, is I me. See. I see how it is. Feel free to put that in. YouTube you slash me. dot com yeah. slash Vito to subscribe to Vito. There you go. And then you got Popcorn Planet and this channel, Movie World, where we're posting these videos. I'm just putting them over here to try and get them seen more. Because I post so much content on the other channel, I worried it would get lost. But this did really well for this channel. We're going to be doing so much more. Mortal Kombat Annihilation is next. Yikes. However, I uh, want your comments down below because we got lots more in store. I want to keep watching bad movies with you guys. And if you become a member of Popcorn Planet, you might get a special invite VIP screenings where we watch them together. Vito, are you ever? do you do anything special like that? Are you planning to? I'm, I'm planning to maybe see if I can do something with this. Come on by YouTube.com slash Vito. And, uh, yeah, I'd love to start doing some screenings or as something. As this continues, we'll, we'll as we get views, we'll see. But, yeah, so far it's been very fun to watch with my community these bad movies. It makes it easier. In fact, now that we're, we've got through this, the one thing I will say, I had to watch this movie at 1.5 speed on Netflix. I did the same thing on your recommendation. <laughs> it made it so it's, much better. It's too long, let's be clear. It does not need to be Put two hours Put the subtitles on, watch a little faster speed. Uh, I felt like I was, like, in, in, in the laser beam getting it sucked in my brain quicker, and it totally worked. So, uh, if you got to watch Battlefield. It made Earth. it more enjoyable, honestly. It, it you know, it I, kicked I up actually, the pace a I bit. assume it's a slow movie. It's a glacial movie, but to have the the action moving quicker. There, there was a point. We're going to watch end, it at home. I recommend the one point five speed. There was a point at the end where me and the whole uh, there were ten of us watching or so, and we were all getting so bored. It was just so <laughs> such a, <laughs> such a slog at a certain point. The the fun had worn off. But I'm glad we got to do this. And now we tell you tell us in the comments below if you haven't already hit that subscribe button here to Movie World. We'll be posting more. Hit the bell for all alerts. Smash that like button and tell us Team Andy, Team Vito in the comments down below. Below. And don't forget to check out the pinned comment to vote as well. Thank you guys so much for watching. Stay tuned for Mortal Kombat Annihilation coming up next. It's going to be epic. Fatality. <laughs> oh, I did that right. Finally. Thanks for watching, everybody.